Hello my small fat adaptive family and welcome back to another episode of Is It Worth It? Where I look at products, gadgets, foods, devices, anything really that might aid you on your keto journey and I tell you from my opinion as someone who's been in ketosis for over four years what I think of them and whether they're worth it. Today we're going to be talking about sweetener but specifically one brand of sweetener and that is Sucrin Gold. It's not very often that you find a product that says it is an alternative of something high sugar, high carb, and it actually is an alternative, but Sucre and Gold is what it says it is on the packet. It truly does mimic brown sugar. When you open that bag, you're met with a brown sugar smell and it's got that crystal kind of texture to it. It's moist like Demerara sugar, and of course it's brown. And I find little touches like it just being brown really adds to my experience. The packaging is durable and it is really pleasant to the eyes. This golden sort of dark browny black is, is very nice. Though the packaging can cause problems for some and I will talk about that in my cons later. It also has an incredibly low glycemic index due to the sweeteners being used which means it has barely an effect on the blood sugars and it is also eight calories per 100 grams or 3.5 ounces that is 372 less calories than the same amount of brown sugar pros firstly look it's something you can buy in the two main places my viewers are and that's the united states of america and the united kingdom that is a first for is it worth it to have something easily accessible you can get it on both amazon uk and amazon usa for a reasonably decent price without horrendous shipping fees. You can even get it from the Sucrim website that has a UK and the US version. It does really mimic brown sugar with its smell, texture and consistency. You're not forced to buy a big bag of it. On the Sucrim website for 50p, you can literally buy a little sachet of it to give it a go before you go and buy a bulk amount. And I find with keto specific products, you either gotta buy the bulk or you don't have any of it. So it's so refreshing have something that you can try for a very very small amount of money first before you decide whether you like it or not. As I said about the glycemic index it is mainly erythritol which is a polyol that has no effect on our blood sugars and like with most sweeteners it uses other sweeteners to bulk it out however the sweeteners used in sucrin are tagatose, glycerol, steviol. Tagatose has about a glycemic index of three and steviol don't have a glycemic index. That makes it incredibly, incredibly low in carbs coming in at about 1.9 net carbs per 100 grams. And that is absolutely brilliant for anyone on keto, but it's especially brilliant for those that are doing keto because they're diabetic. Another pro off the back of the last one is that it has no hidden carbs or nasty ingredients. It's sweetener, it's a little bit of malt extract, but that's it. The sweetener is what the sweetener is. There's no nasty, nasty high glycemic index sweeteners or anything like that. It dissolves pretty easily. This isn't something that's discussed very often, but I think it's quite important. You want your sweetener to dissolve. I'm gonna run a clip now so you can see me just stirring it into cold water. Now we all know that all sugars, all sweeteners don't dissolve 100% in cold water, but it shows you how much it can dissolve just in cold water. So now the pros and the cons, the ones that can be either or both, kind of depending on who you are. The taste itself is a pro and a con. It is a con for me personally, but others don't see it as a problem and quite like the taste. Now the reason for this is because it uses erythritol and because it uses stevia, I get an aftertaste that I call the minty aftertaste. Other people call it a cooling aftertaste. It's quite common with a lot of sweeteners to get it. Some sweeteners, specifically like the brand Truvia, I find have a horrendous minty aftertaste and I literally, I cannot eat them because it just tastes so fake to me and I, I really don't like it. Sucrin Gold, I find has this minty aftertaste, but it is not as bad as other sweeteners I have tasted. With that being said as well, a lot of people either agree with me or disagree with me. It's kind of 50-50 for everyone. Some people say it doesn't have an aftertaste at all. Some people say it's got the minty aftertaste. It's really down to your taste buds, I guess. I will say as well though, you don't really notice it when you incorporate it into baking at all. Speaking of taste, I find sucre and gold so incredibly sweet. You know that sort of sweet taste you get with sweeteners that 
you know it's a sweetener because of the taste of the sweetness. I hope you understand what I mean. Very sweet sweeteners have a very specific sweetener taste to them and I find sucre and gold can lean towards that taste. However, again, a lot of people say it's not sweet enough. So this is clearly a taste bud debate going on with sucre and gold. Price also lands in pros and cons today, partly because it depends where you get it. If you buy it from somewhere like Holland and Barrett's that is a known health shop, it is going to be far more expensive than if you get it sort of online from somewhere like Amazon or eBay. Actually, I got three bags recently, 220 grams, three of them for about 20 pounds, which was really decent because Amazon do a lot of sales on things like this all the time. The other reason it's a pro and a con is because if that seems too expensive for you, it might not be expensive because of how long it lasts. I had a 500 gram bag that actually, I've just decanted about a quarter of it into this packet so I could open it for this video. I had a 500 gram bag that was literally bought way back in March and it's still going to this day. If you're going to be using it just to replicate that brown sugar taste in your baking, you know, so if, if you thought you had to be replacing it consistently, you won't need to so it will last you a long time and will be worth the money but if you're planning on using it like any other sweetener just in coffee tea all desserts everything it will become an expensive sweetener very quickly so now the cons there's only really two and one of them is more of a speculation than a con first one is talking about the packaging it's really nice and pleasant i find personally i struggle sometimes with the packaging what i mean by that this is the last packet I had and if I press against the seal, no matter how hard I press, no matter how delicately and gently I go across that seal, it's still open. And that's not so much of a con itself because I can deal with that, it's that I have to then put this bag within another bag and when it comes to actually cooking a recipe and using sucre and gold, I was having to be really careful and it was like a really risky sort of, it felt like a bomb defusal of trying to get this out of the bag without pouring it everywhere and oh, it just, it's a con for me that sometimes you might have problems with the packaging. The other con is that I've seen some people complain about joint problems and be able to directly correlate it with their intake of sucre and gold. I've never had any problems with this. My family's never had any problems with this. There's no research on this to show that Sucrin does this, so I would take those sort of reviews with a pinch of salt. So, Sucrin Gold, is it worth it? I think if you're somebody that does a lot of baking, a lot of these replica recipes, a lot, a lot of sweet food, and you want to emulate brown sugar, the taste of brown sugar, or if you're somebody that just really likes the taste of brown sugar in general and now you can't have it, I would say it's definitely worth it, yeah. Give it a go. And like with most keto-friendly foods, I, I always kind of say just give them a go because you, you never know. However, with sucre and gold, I'm not saying you need to give it a go, it's amazing, all of this. I'm saying it really depends on you as a person. It depends on what your taste buds are like, how you are with other sweeteners, whether you really like the taste of brown sugar, whether you bake a lot. It really, really depends on the person. It is a decent product. It's it's rather ple pleasant. But should you go out of your way to buy it? Unless you really wanna go out of your way to buy it, unless you've read reviews and you've watched this video and you've watched other videos and you've looked into the Sucrum website and all of that and you really wanna get it, I would say if you see a recipe that asks for Sucrum Gold, you don't need Sucrum Gold. For me personally, it's nothing more special than erythritol itself. Yeah, it emulates the taste and the texture and things like that of brown sugar, but it is not needed in a recipe. And even me as an avid keto-friendly product finder, I find sucre and gold, it's just one of those things that I will recommend to you, but I won't say it will make your life easier, it will make keto easier, anything like that. There are much cheaper, better sweeteners out there. But I was never a fan really of brown sugar before starting keto. So 
this could be a little bit biased. Who knows, you might love it, you might hate it. If you've got the money, if you've got the accessibility, if you wanna give it a go, give it a go. No one's forcing you to have it. No one's telling you you shouldn't have it. As I said, I find it decent, but not decent enough to replace all of my sweeteners with Sucrin Gold. Sucrin has a wide variety of keto-friendly products. If you would like me to do any more Is It Worth It episodes on any of the other Sucrin family members, let me know below and I'll see what I can find. With that being said, that is all from me today. Like this video, comment any reviews you want me to do and I'll see if I have the accessibility to get the said products and whether I want to review them. Subscribe if you're inclined. Keep calm, keep on. Thanks for watching.